What's up YouTube? If you're new here, my name is Danny James and in today's tutorial I'm going to be sharing some of the effects that you can apply on your rotoscoped layers for your music videos inside of After Effects. If you do end up enjoying this video, kindly give it a like so that it's recommended to other people with the same interest as you. That's how the algorithm works. And if you're also watching me for the first time, kindly hit the subscribe and turn on the post notification bell so that you never miss out on my videos. Kindly feel free to check out my website at dannyjames.co. I have preset pack slots and very important stuff that you can use to spice up all your music videos. Now let's jump into this one. All right, guys, we're inside of After Effects and I have my comps set up already so that you can do this in the most efficient manner possible. So we won't need to do rotoscoping on our clips as I've done that already so that you can save time on this. And if you'd like for me to do a tutorial on rotoscoping only just a complete walkthrough, please leave that on the comment box and I'll consider that. On this layer, if I isolate the first layer, it's the Tori Roto, okay? And behind it is the background plus the Roto brush layer. The first effect that you can use uh, is a basic displacement. Just create about two duplicates of your rotoed layer. On the first rotoed layer, we'll just add a transform. Go to your effects, add a transform. Put it there. Change using the comps shutter angle. Put your own shutter angle. Uh, around 120 should be good. We want a smooth blur on this one. So 100, 120 should be good. All you need to do is add some keyframes for position. You can also add a keyframe for scaling if you want to. Hit you so that you can see that keyframe. Let it begin there and then go a few frames to your right. And then you can alter the position. Maybe take this layer to the left up to here. If you want, you can also scale it just a little bit nudge it on that side go on to the next rotored layer add the transform effect again uh, do the same thing with the shutter angle 120 maybe add a position and scaling keyframe hit you so that you can see it and then go a few frames to your right and then increase the scaling a bit 100 more than the previous one and then maybe you can adjust its position take it to the left side uh, it's also dependent on your footage. Just measure well using your eyes. And if we scroll through this, we have something that separates like that. These keyframes should start at the same time with these other ones. Okay. And then highlight on all of them, put them on easy ease. And then now if I scroll through, you, you can see how they appear like that. And you can also have them come back to the initial position. Just copy the initial keyframe, Control C, Control V, squeeze it to the right a bit, and then do the same for the first rotored layer, Control C, Control V. What that does is that the rotored layers split like this, and then again, they also join back perfectly. You can do something else to spice this up. You can go to your effects and maybe add a hue and saturation. I'm doing this specifically on this clip because I can see it has some rich colors on it. You can alter the hue just a tiny bit. You don't need to do anything that's overboard. Okay. And then I can copy the same effect, put it on the rotored layer that is right beneath. And you can also change its hue. Yeah. So that way you also have some variance in colors on your rotored layers which split up and join back like that okay that looks really dope once they're all back you can trim any of the rest so that the footage can continue normally okay going on to the next one i will use this comp right here with melvoni we have the rotored layer again let me make sure it's a common color it's in yellow so i will Isolate that layer so that you can see it. So this effect is quite simple. Go to your effects and look for a strobe. So you're basically adding a strobe light, uh, which is something that should flicker through this sequence. Uh, what you do with the strobe light under the duration, if you put something like 0.2, put the period at 0.4, just double the figure. The strobe should be a little bit more slow, but I want something a bit more faster than this. So I'll put something like a 0.1, on the duration and 0.2 on the period and now it should look something like this 
yeah good you don't finish there just go to your effects again look for glow in this one you can't use the inbuilt after effects glow it really sucks for real just look for a third party glow so i'll use a sapphire glow in this example put it right there i'll just increase the threshold slightly ever so slightly so that i can reduce the intensity uh, let me also adjust these other parameters maybe the brightness it's too bright for my liking and just a little glow something like that so now we have something that flickers like this so you can work on your glow settings uh, just to fine tune it until you get something that you like now with this one you can either use it as an effect or as a transition uh, i've seen this in most of judge buffords music videos and if you haven't watched my tutorial on how to edit music videos like judge buffard there is a whole series on that which explains dope concepts that i've seen from some of the better directors out there so how to use this as a transition uh, try to make your rotted layer plus the background overlap your initial clip by about 10 frames let me measure 10 frames from the end of this clip So that's 10 frames i've used page up and page down keys to do that and then once it's there now trim the rotted layer so that it only occupies those 10 frames and then just cut out half of this second clip so that half of this rotted layer is displayed on the first clip and the other half falls into the next clip so if i play this back yeah it's really intuitive and very fast what you can do with this one as i've seen from judge buffard's music videos he highlights it on a specific part maybe that's the hand or maybe it's the watch and then rotoscope that and then do the same thing that i just showed you and then use it to transition into the next clip if you want a comprehensive guide on doing that just look up my video exotic strobe glow it should also be showing somewhere up here so that's something that you can look at i'll go on to my next one okay the next one will be a very low-key whip slide effect with this one you can either apply it on the rotored layer or on the background layer on this layer you can see the rotored layer is the one that's above so right on the background just go to your effects and look for offset put it right there on the background and then we might also consider adding a blur later on a directional blur kind of directional blur put it right there I will disable the blur for now right on the offset add a keyframe for shift center and then i'll hit u so that i can see it and then i'll go a bit later in time and then you can shift it as many times as you want you can go up to around 3000 and then try as best as you can to align that back so that it's perfectly back on the same position and then put it on easy ease like that so if I preview this, it should look like this now. Yeah, it's it doesn't have to go through many rotations. If you want to go through more rotations, just up this value. Maybe we are at 2800 right now. We can go up to 7000, 8000. It's also dependent on your footage. So we can bump it up to around 3600 maybe. And then I'll try my best to align it. Like that and let me just preview it like that now i'll enable the directional blur and then you can add any direction and then increase the blur length ever so slightly uh this is not enough so a blur of around 15 should look good and then you can put the direction either 90 degrees or any other angle that you might find best and now if i preview this yeah, it goes on to something like this. Uh, if you want, you can also add a scaling property. You can hit S, add a keyframe right at the beginning. Make sure squeeze that keyframe to the beginning so that it stay, it starts at 100. And then it can increase in size maybe at 120. But at the end, make sure it comes back to zero. So I'll copy the first keyframe. Control C, Control V. And then I'll also hit you so that I can see my other keyframes. Make sure it's on easy ease. And now we can align it perfectly. 
Now, one thing that I should have showed you on the first keyframes for sh the offset, go under this the speed graphs. Make sure you're editing the speed graphs, and then the transition could be fastest at the beginning and then slow towards the end. So it should look something like this. Yeah. Make sure it comes back like that. Uh, that looks really good. I'll go on to the next one and that is the reverse displacement. I'll use it on this other comp. We already have the rotored layer and the background beneath. What I'll do here, I'll create about two, two more replicas of the roto brush. Go to my effects and look for a transform. Add it on both layers. Maybe let's start with the first two. Okay, I'll start with the first one, which is right below. Or oh, once you have the transform effect, I'll begin with this layer. I'll enable a keyframe for position and also rotation. Hit you so that I can see those two keyframes. Highlight on those two keyframes and drag them to your right. I want that to be our final look. Now, right initially, we can rotate this anyway. Okay. And then we can displace it. We can displace the position in any direction and take it outside the frame. So it should come back like this. So I'll bring this other keyframe a bit closer to this one. So we have something that joins in like that. So essentially you want to have displacement uh, that happens like that, such that they join back into the picture. I do the same thing with the second rotor layer, add a position and rotation keyframe, hit you, okay, squeeze that keyframe to my right, then initially I'll rotate it a different direction and displace it maybe upwards, up like that. I'll highlight all the keyframes that we've worked on, put them on easy ease and we should have something that joins in like that. So I'll also drag this keyframe so that we have something like a staircase from our first one, so that they join in very fast like that. I think we can add one more layer. So I'll duplicate this, hit you. I will drag those keyframes to my right. We don't need to do anything, just drag those keyframes. So now we have some three staircases of the sort. We can alter the timing between the two keyframes to give us different looks and then we need to finish this off by adding some blur uh, which we forgot on the transform effects disable using the comps shutter angle and you put yours let's go with something like 180 on something that is a bit more fast or pronounced i'll do that on all the layers give them a 180 degree on the shutter angle so that we have some natural blurriness whenever something is moving across your frame. So if I play this back now, that is a bit too fast. So I will space out my keyframes, the second keyframes for each. I'll make sure they are a little bit more spaced out. Again, there is no one way of doing it. Just experiment and find uh, different ways to make it look good. So you can see now they jump back like that. I'd suggest reducing the shutter angle to what we began with early in the tutorial at 100 to 120 degrees, which is what I'm doing to all the layers. Yeah, so that should look good once we play it back. Yeah, they join back like a fucking puzzle. Yeah, uh, I really like how that came out. I'll just go to the next one. We have this clip right here. The artist is directly in front of the camera and he's also showing his hands. I've seen that on a different clip which I'm playing right now as you speak. So you can see the hands come from the frame and they come towards the frame and they disappear. So that is something that I thought would also be useful. Right on this clip we have a rotted layer of the left hand. We also have... Um, I'm toggling here to specifically display one or two layers within our comp. So we have the rotored layer of the right hand and the left hand 
which is the first step that you need in your clips. So what you can do with that, let's begin with the right hand. What you'll simply need to do is just need to add a scaling keyframe. So just hit S. But if we try scaling it now, you can see the direction with which it goes. Uh, let me also isolate that layer so that you can see what's happening. So the hand goes upwards, but you want it to come towards the screen and out of the frame. So I will undo that setting, make sure the scaling is back at 100. Isolate that clip again, find your anchor point tool, okay? And then manually move the anchor points somewhere maybe above the hand, such that if we try scaling now, it comes towards the screen. So I will undo that. And again, I want to place it such that it only comes out towards this right hand side of the screen. So right now, uh, that looks okay, but I will keep on changing and seeing uh, different possibilities that I'm getting. So I think if you place it somewhere on the left hand side, it should come out of the right. Yeah, now this is exactly the movement that we want. With the anchor point at this area, I'll shift back to my selection tool, add the scaling keyframe, push it to the beginning, and then right here, scale it out of the frame like that. Put that on easy ease. Something else that you want to add onto this rotor layer, you want to add a directional blur. Okay, add a keyframe for blur length. At the beginning, make sure you hit you so that you can see it. Right on the second keyframe, make sure the blur only increases as time goes by. I will enable all layers so that you can see what's happening. Uh, you can see the hand comes out of the frame. That's some sort of the same thing that you want to do. Now, one more thing we need to do, we need to add a tint on the hands so that it's slightly black and white and differentiated from the rest of the clip. With the right hand, I'll just duplicate the rotor layer again, hit you, hit you on also the other one, and then I'll squeeze this keyframe halfway like a staircase so that you have like two layers coming out. So let me play this back. Two layers coming out. As I showed you earlier, you can adjust the spacing between the first and second keyframe to increase the timing on this. So now it should look something like that. Okay, so I'll do the same thing with the left hand. I won't repeat it, I'll just do it first and then I'll show you at the end what it looks like. So this is just a quick time lapse. Okay, uh, I just did that part of the process. So the left hand, I've tried aligning the first left hand with the right hand, making sure the keyframes are aligned and they have the same timing as I've done with the second one, the second left hand and also the second right hand. They also have the same timing with the keyframes. So this is what it does to the clip. I also forgot to add the tint effect on the hand. Let me just copy this effect, paste it on the left hand. I really think this is dope if we try playing it back now. Okay, you can see those are two duplicates. I'd have wanted to go for like a third duplicate so that it also has that continuous feel onto it. I think that's a really cool effect that you can do. And that's basically it. Those are some of the effects that I could share with you today. Most of these would require you actually doing it practically more than watching. If you do it practically, you'll be able to see what's really happening. I'll also have the project file for this tutorial up on my Gumroad and it will also be up on my Patreon. And that way you can see what's happening with the keyframes and all the small details that maybe my experience has built over time. My name is Danny James. See you in the next tutorial. Peace.